In this video, we're going to cover form validation in JavaScript. Now, you might recognize some of this code. I am actually using the same code that we used in my series on CSS. So we're not going to go over how that works in terms of creating these forms and how the styling of these forms work. I covered that again in my CSS series, so if you want to learn how to do that, you will want to go watch my CSS series. But what we are going to do is create the JavaScript to validate these forms. Now, one point I want to make is that you should never use JavaScript alone to validate your forms. You should use both JavaScript and either ASP or PHP to do server-side validation. So you actually want to do both. You want to do client-side validation with JavaScript and server-side validation with either PHP or ASP. And we will cover that side, the server-side, in one of my other series on ASP and PHP. Now, think of JavaScript validation as sort of a way of being nice to your users. In other words, you are preventing mistakes from being submitted to the server. That way, the form doesn't have to make a round trip to the server and then get validated there and then have to come back to the user where they have to fill it out again. You want to stop it before it's submitted to make sure they fill out the form correctly before it is submitted to the server. Now in terms of the server, this is where we would specify where to submit the form to. Now again, we're not going to do server-side validation in this series. So we're just going to submit it to an HTML, this little message.html that I've created. And you will want to create this web page and place that in the same folder as our JavaScript and our index.html. So it should look something like this. We should have all four of these files in the same folder. And as usual, I will put all the code in the description of this video. So again, that's what this action attribute does. Now this method attribute has a couple different values. One is post and one is get. Post submits the completed web form to be processed by our server. And again, in this case, it's just going to our message.html, but that's what post does. You can also do a get, but we'll talk more about that in the series on ASP and PHP. And then, of course, we have our on submit event, a new event that we're introducing to this series. And this is the event that will submit the form. So when we click on our button down here, this submit button, this event will get triggered and it will submit this entire form. And of course, right now we're going to call a validate text box function which I created now right now that's empty and let's actually go ahead and just run this before we even fill that out and we'll hit submit and there you can see our message.html came back and said your form has been submitted and that's because nothing has been validated right we can put anything in this form that we want well let's go back to that for a second and what we want to do now is ensure that the user puts in at least one character in this text box. So they have to fill in something. We don't want an empty form submitted. So we're actually going to prevent the user from submitting an empty form. Right now, nothing's being stopped, but we're going to stop it with JavaScript code. So let's go over to the JavaScript code. And here you can see we've got our validate text box function. And so we'll start to fill this out. Now, the first thing we need to do, let's flip back to the code, is we need to get a hold of the text box that we're going to validate. Now, we're only going to validate against one text box in this video. Now, we'll do multiple text boxes in the next few videos. But in this case, we're just going to go ahead and work against this first text box in which the user will put in their name. So remember, we have to get a hold of that text box and we're going to use the ID. And we've been using this many times, the get element by ID method. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste this code in here. So we're going to create a variable called box. And again, we're going to use a document object. We'll use the get element by ID. And we're going to use the ID of name, which of course equates to right here, that first text box. So we got a hold of that. Now what we need to do, of course, is create our if statement where we're going to go ahead and check the value in the text box. So I'll go ahead and copy and paste the first line here. And actually, you know what? I already had the closing bracket down here, so that's good. So what we're doing, here's our if statement. We're going to use our box object. And here's where we're going to use the value property. This will get us the value that's inside of our text box. And what we're saying here is, is this equal to null? That's what this is right here. We are saying null. So what we're saying here basically is if the value of the text box is equal to null, then this condition is true. That's the first thing I want to say. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But that's what we're saying. Null is true. 
And I'll go ahead and copy and paste the second line here. And what we're gonna do is if this is true, we're gonna send an alert to the user and say, the field marked in red cannot be blank. So they have to at least put one character in for this to be false, right? So this seems a little bit strange, doesn't it? That we're saying, hey, we want this to be true. And then if it's true, this code will execute. And this actually is the code that's gonna stop the form from being submitted. So that is a little bit weird, isn't it? We're saying, hey, if this is null, then here's where we're gonna stop it. Doesn't it seem like it should be the other way around? Again, it's a little bit strange. And again, if the user enters one character, this will be false and none of the code in here will be executed to stop the form from being submitted, and of course the form will be submitted. So now let's go ahead and save this up, and let's go ahead and run this now. So we'll go ahead and run this. And there we've got our form. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize this here, and I wanna uh, actually do a split screen here. So we'll flip over to the, actually let's minimize this too now. We'll do a split screen scenario here. And there we go. Okay, we've got this arranged nice and neat. And let's actually pull this over a little bit more here. Okay, good. There we go. Okay, and so let's uh, flip back to our JavaScript code. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to go ahead and put in one character. So now this is going to test out to be false, right? This is no longer null. It'll be false. And so we should not hit this alert. So let's hit submit. And yeah, the form was submitted, good. But now let's go ahead and get rid of that character. And we'll hit submit. And there you can see, we got our alert. It says the field marked in red cannot be blank. There's an okay button here. Now that's good, right? This tested out to be null. There was a null in this first text box. And then of course, since this is true, now our code within our if statement will be executed to stop this from being submitted. And the first thing that happened, of course, is we got the alert. So if we hit okay to that, the form was still submitted. Now you might be asking, well, why was that? Why did that happen? And the answer to that is we didn't stop the form still from being submitted. Yes, this box came up, but the alert in itself is not gonna stop the form from being submitted. This code executed and it was submitted to message.html. So we need to stop this form from being submitted. And the way we do that is to use a return statement. So we're gonna type in return and then we're gonna say false. And by the way, this return keyword here, this is a Boolean. It can only be true or false. If we say false, that means that the on submit will be interrupted. It will be stopped. That will actually stop the on submit. So that's what we do. Now that might seem a little bit strange that we're putting false in here, but it doesn't equate to the if statement itself. You know, whether this is true or false, all that stuff. This is just a line by itself that we're saying, hey, return false and stop the on submit from submitting the form. And so that's what we're doing there. Now, we're not done yet. We actually have to hook this up to our event on our HTML page. So we need to actually put in the return keyword here, and then this will be synced up with our JavaScript code. And so let's go ahead and rerun this. And so now if I hit the submit form and I haven't put any characters in here, it should now stop us. And how will we know that? Well, we won't get this message.html. It will just stay on this index Dot HTML won't go to here. So let's hit submit and we hit OK. And there you can see it stayed on the same page. It stopped us. So that's how this works. So again, now our function is actually stopping the on submit from submitting the form because of this return false. We are returning false and the function is therefore able to stop this on submit from happening. Now let's go ahead and put in one character. And if we hit submit, this should work now, right? And it did because it came here and this of course tested out to be false isn't that strange this has to be false and then because it's false there's nothing to stop the form now from being submitted there is no return false that only gets executed if the condition is true well the condition is false now because our form was not null so because it's false then it gets submitted and so it seems a little bit strange like i said okay in the next video we're actually going to add another condition to check the address box. So we're gonna do multiple conditions and that involves using a logical operator. So we'll talk about that in the next video.